In June 1928, the Bishop of Menevia, Francis Vaughan, asked Mother Mary of Jesus, then Prioress of Notting Hill Carmel, to found a Carmelite monastery in his diocese, and to purchase a suitable property for the purpose. On the 25th of October 1928, Mother Mary of Jesus told her sisters at recreation, the Bishop of Menevia told the Pope he is going to have a Carmel of the Primitive Observance in his diocese. And the Holy Father said, I will give a privileged blessing to the Mother Prioress and her work, the foundations, present and future. Then he preached to the Bishop about the contemplative life, how he can do nothing without true prayer and union with God. And he said he is happy to have a Carmel in Wales. Cardinal Bourne said to us, I give you a special mission to pray for Wales. A group of eight sisters set off on the 21st of May 1929. One sister always had suffering of some kind when Mother Mary of Jesus made a foundation, and this was especially so at Dolgethley. Our mother had received a letter signed by several of the inhabitants telling her not to come. When we arrived there was not a too amiable looking crowd, but not a word was said. However, they soon warmed to the sisters. About 2,000 people came to the opening, although the local ministers and parsons had forbidden their flocks to come, and all listened in absolute silence to the cardinal's sermon, explaining the purpose of Carmel to them. Some of them were heard to say, We didn't know Roman Catholics loved Jesus Christ like that. The contemplative orders are the Catholic Church's step towards the literal observance of the First Commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy whole strength. For whilst the majority of the faithful are called upon to observe the First Commandment as a guiding principle, amid the variety of their activities, there are others whom God calls to observe it as a way of life, full and complete in itself. And them he makes capable of their vocation by his grace. From them he expects not an abundance of activity seasoned with love of himself, not a portion of their time and energy, but the whole of their life and all their activities for his own service and praise. Privileged souls are they to spend their days in prayer and close communion with him. Mother Mary of Jesus urged us. Now, beloved daughters, help me finish God's work in a powerful manner by our own poor deeds of love and fidelity, repeating in all your acts, my God, I love thee.
Mother Mary of St. Peter was installed as first prioress. She became a Catholic aged 23. Mother Peter used to attend Vespers at Farm Street Church, and one Friday the words of Psalm 140, I am alone until I cross over, struck her with particular force, and she realised that God was calling her to just that, to be alone with him all her life. When she was four, she heard her parents discussing a grave financial crisis. She offered to forego her honey at tea time, which she loved, so that her father could have the money saved. Mother Mary of Carmel, although not present at the foundation of our Carmel, was really the chief cornerstone of our community and its spirit, being prioress here from 1930 to 1949. A sister from her first Carmel of Wolverhampton recalled, Her humility was often a lesson to us all. It was so genuine, sincere and spontaneous. After bringing in a basket of very big and old broad beans, she was reprimanded for thinking they were suitable for the sisters, and they would all have to be skinned. Oh, mother, she said, please let me take them away. I will skin them all. I'm so very sorry. Sister Iris Mary remembers. Space was greatly lacking in those days, and she slept in the tiny community room at that time. Her bed was bundled up against the wall during the day to take up less room, which meant it had to be reassembled before she retired. She didn't believe in stockpiling, but trusted in the providence of God to provide food for the community feasts, even during the scarce wartime years, and he always did. Eine Elizabeth Newcomb was born in 1857 in Drogheda, Ireland. Both her parents died young, and she and her eight siblings were all adopted by her aunt Lily, a member of the Plymouth Brethren. Eine and three of her sisters became missionaries for decades, first in China and later in Tokyo, initially with the Church of England, and later Eine was a missionary captain in the Salvation Army. Her sister Hesse was martyred in China in the lead-up to the Boxer Rebellion. Eine became a Catholic after a long struggle at the age of 70. She had felt an attraction to the religious life ever since seeing Dominican sisters wandering up and down to their convent from the window of her childhood home. And now she sought to enter Dolgethly Carmel. Initially, Mother Mary of Carmel said no on account of her age, but after a second meeting allowed her to go and see Mother Mary of Jesus who wrote to say, she is a real saint, you must accept her and give her my name, Mary of Jesus. So, at the age of 74, she entered the novitiate. When her eyesight diminished, she learnt the Psalms off by heart, so she could keep saying the office. Her final profession as a Carmelite, aged 79 in 1936, the year she died, was the crown of her missionary life to win souls for God. When I die, I'll go straight to China. One day, Sister Winifred, the infirmarian, found her weeping. They said they would come for me three days ago, and they have not come. Who, Sister? St. Joseph and St. James. They said they would come for me. Sister Joanna of Jesus was born in 1908 on the Isle of Barra in the Outer Hebrides, which was at that time entirely Catholic. From her stories, it sounded as if life on the island was as it was for the early church. Her father used to dig and plant the garden of an old widow, and Mary and her brothers often ran errands for vulnerable people. She learnt to sail a fishing smack, and was skilled in Scottish dancing. She did not know how she got her vocation to Carmel. 
All she knew was that she must give herself to God. It was literally a call to leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. She knew she would never see her parents again, and it was years before any relatives visited her. Sister Mary Catherine of the Holy Spirit's mission was to pray for peace in the world. All her sufferings were offered for this intention. Sister Catherine had a very special love for Jesus on his cross. She contemplated him permanently, I think, using a poor little cross that was often lying on the table. Sometimes she was very confused in the mornings, and a day which was just beginning seemed to her a very difficult task to cope with. Then she understood that Jesus on that cross said to her, Do you think it was easy for me to die for you? And she began to go quickly to the choir to ask Jesus for help, for enlightenment. She often told me about her first encounter with a mother prioress who said to her, Today is Friday, the day he died for you. And she used to say, I felt like Friday. She was a very grateful person and very poor in heart. She would refer to herself as a poor little thing. And yet always after conversation with her, you were aware of true wisdom in what she had said on spiritual matters. Sister Winifred was the last of the eight founding sisters to die, aged 102. She had no fear of death, having helped so many of her sisters through that door, and on one occasion she had said to someone, You must not be afraid of death. It's just going home to God. When dialogue first came into the area of obedience to religious superiors, she found this very difficult, as it was in her mind at that time so contrary to what she had known in all her calm light life. It sounds to me more like getting permission to do your own will. Later she realised the value of exchange, always in a private one-to-one -one with the prioress, and she could dialogue like everyone else. Sister Mary Gertrude of Jesus was born in Preston in 1903 into a staunch Catholic family with two martyrs among their ancestors. In 1909, I was six years old at the time, my mother took my young sister, aged two, to St Winifred's Well at Holywell with spine trouble. She bathed in the well and was cured. Then my mother went to Pantasif, the nearby Franciscan friary, and went round the outdoor stations of the cross. At the Calvary, a Franciscan friar was painting the railings round the shrine. When my mother came home, she was telling us all about it. When she said about the friar painting the railings, I chimed in with, did he say good afternoon to you? My mother said, Oh no, he was talking to our Lord while he was working and did not speak. At once I knew that that was what I wanted to do. Always just think of our Lord. I never forgot about it. I wanted to be enclosed in Carmel but was kept as an extern for 30 years. Through all that time, I never stopped wanting to be enclosed, but I accepted God's will for me and waited. She had severe internal injuries from having stones thrown at her by two young boys when she was an extern, but she never complained of her disabilities. Sister had the job of community carpenter, and made amazing cupboards for the sisters out of packing boxes. This is one of them. 
When praised for a job well done, she would reply, I've done my best, I can't do more. A postulant asked her if she had any preferences among her various duties, and her reply was, I just do what I am told. Everything is the same. Sister Gertrude had been an accomplished pianist and had said that on the night before she entered, Carmel, she played through every piece of music she knew and then firmly closed the lid of the piano. Many years later, when we got a piano here, she was encouraged to take up playing again. She said, I gave that gift to God when I entered Carmel and I'm not going to take it back now.